Hello and welcome to today's lesson on quasars, which is part of the astrophysics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at um, look at some of the properties of what quasars are. So in today's lesson, what we're going to look is understand that quasars are bright radio sources and are the most distant object we can measure. We understand that quasars must be far away as they show us a large redshift, and we can finally estimate the power of a quasar and its distance from the Earth, which leads into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification on astrophysics, which is quasars 3.9.3.3. Now, quasars are an object which we can, we can use as a standard candle. So quasars are stellar objects which are strong radio wave emitters. So as a result, you can, see, you can observe a quasar by looking at its radio wave emission. Now, when the spectral lines of quasars were observed, astronomers were puzzled because they were unlike the, st the spectral lines of stars. So it was finally realized that the lines from a quasar were an emission line caused by de-excitation rather than absorption lines caused by excitation in stars. So this indicated to astronomers that straight away that these objects were extremely powerful compared to stars. And in addition, when the Balmer lines of this emission spectrum were found, it was realized that they'd be massively redshifted compared to reference samples. In fact, they were the most redshifted sample ever observed. So this indicated that these objects are extremely far away and are in our early universe. So, But also they back up the idea that these objects were extremely powerful compared to stars because they were so far away yet still observable. So let's just clarify. Quasars are stellar objects which are strong radio wave emitters which are extremely distant. The previous evidence indicated that these objects were extremely powerful compared to stars. Stars. Now quasars have a power output of about 10 galaxies or about a trillion stars, which is why they can be detected with Earth-based telescopes. Now it took many years to understand what quasars were, but eventually the mechanism behind a quasar was understood. Now a quasar is a supermassive black hole surrounded by a sea of gas and dust. Now we believe the size of the gas and dust cloud is of, the, is of similar size to that of our solar system. Now again, please remember that quasars are the most powerful objects in the universe. So they have a power of a trillion suns in the space of one solar system. So they have a power output of approximately 10 to the 42 watts. Now as the gas and dust are accelerated towards the supermassive black hole, this causes gamma waves to be emitted by the quasar. Now as the gamma waves travel through the universe, they become stretched due to the expansion of the universe and become radio waves, which is why quasars are observed as radio sources. However, we now know that quasars emit electromagnetic radiation from the whole spectrum. So you can observe here an artist's impression of what a quasar looks like. Now the discovery of quasars was controversial as the values of power and size seemed unrealistic compared to other objects in our universe. However, multiple observations have confirmed these values and quasars are now accepted objects in astrophysics and in addition the redshift observed by quasars is larger than expected due to Hubble's law confirming that type 1a supernova type 1a supernovae measurements that the universe expansion must be accelerating now as quasars are only observed in the distant universe this implies quasars only formed in the early universe in fact it was postulated that quasars formed from the supernova remnants of the first massive stars of our universe now now it's important to note that it's very it's very useful that quasars were not pre are not present in our modern day universe and only are present in the early day universe as conditions produced by quasars are not favorable for life to develop. Now we currently believe that there's a supermassive black hole in the center of every large galaxy anchoring the stars in a gravitational attraction but only a select number of galaxies emit material from their center. Now, now, we believe that these supermassive black holes are about 10 to the 6 times the mass of the Sun. 
Now, we call galactic centres, which emit material, active galactic nuclei, and the galaxy which contains an AGN as an active galaxy. Now, similar to a pulsar, the magnetic fields associated with quasars can produce beams of radiation either side of the quasar. Now, we think our Milky Way galaxy has a supermassive black hole in its centre. Now, this provides a large proportion of the gravitational attraction which holds the galaxy together. So so the Milky Way has this supermassive black hole at its centre in the galactic bulge. Now you can notice here that in this diagram we can we understand what our Milky Way galaxy looks like with the observation of the following stars. But as you can see, most of our own galaxy is uncharted. Now we think our galaxy is not an active galaxy, however we think this will change when it collides with the Andromeda galaxy. Now this again would not be ex extremely useful as the emission of material would cause a mass extinction event on Earth if the beam was in our direction. So what we've got to understand is that certain galaxies have an active galactic nucleus and are an active galaxy, which you can observe in the following picture here. You can see um, whilst there's not much emission in the visible, there is a lot of emission in the radio, in indicating that there's a lot of radio waves being emitted from the centre of this particular galaxy. Now AGN do not have the same power as a quasar, however they are still very very powerful. Now since quasars are standard candles, we can use the inverse square law to determine either the power of a quasar or its distance from the Earth. Now previously we stated that, an ob that the brightness of an object observed on the Earth is, is dependent on the distance from the Earth and can be considered the intensity of the radiation. So this is shown in the following equation. Intensity is equal to power over 4 pi d squared, where d is our separation between the object and the Earth. So therefore, power is equal to intensity times by 4 pi d squared. Now, when a quasar has the same observed brightness or intensity as another stellar object, we can use a ratio of this equation. But this equation will only work if a quasar has the same intensity, the brightness, as the other stellar object. So we can say the power of a quasar over the distance to the quasar squared is equal to the power of the other object divided by the distance to that object squared. Now because the intensity is the same on both sides of the equation, it is cancelled out. We can then rearrange the equation to get the following. Power of the quasar over power of the object is equal to the distance of the quasar over the distance of the object all squared. So let's look at an example question. A quasar has the same intensity as a star. The star is 20,000 light years away and has the same same power output as the Sun. The quasar has a redshift giving a distance from the Earth of 1 times 10 to the 10 light years. What is the power of the quasar? Well, as the intensity cancels out because it's the same on both sides of the equation, we can say that P quasar is equal to P uh, star times by distance of the quasar over the distance of the star all squared. So we can say it's equal to 4 times 10 to the 26 times by 1 times 10 to the 10 over 20,000 all squared, which equals 1 times 10 to the 30 watts, which is about 10 times brighter than the entire power of the Milky Way, so it's likely to be right. So what have we learned in today's lesson? Quasars are the most distant measurable objects. The discovery of quasars was due to their fact as bright radio sources. Quasars show large optical redshifts. Estimations involving distance and power output can also be worked out from values given, and the formation of quasars occurs from active supermassive black holes. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to know that quasars are bright radio sources and are the most distant object we can measure. Understand that quasars must be very far away as they show a large redshift, and finally estimate the power output of a quasar and its distance from the Earth. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on quasars, which is part of the astrophysics topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a lovely day.